For this problem, I want you to realize that it's saying, okay, so for the given cost function, so what we're going to assume is C stands for cost, and what we always make the assumption when we're dealing with cost functions, if they don't mention it, is that X is the production level. So um, the X represents the number of units that's being produced, the number of units that are being made. Okay, so here we go. Let's start reading what they want us to do and figure out what we do with this equation. If we need to alter it, if we need to take derivatives, let's let's find out. So the first question says the cost at the production level 1600. Okay, well if they're asking us to find the cost at the production level of 1600, then what does that mean? T stop and think about units. What are the units on a production level 1600? Well, that's just units. Like how many things we're making and isn't that just what X stands for? So all we're going to do is on this problem, everywhere we have an X, we're just going to replace it with 1600. Um, so the, the first problem was very, very simple. It was literally just asking us to substitute in a number. Um, and the purpose of this is if, stop and always ask yourself, whenever a teacher gives you a problem, say, why? If it seems really simple, there's usually a reason why. We're trying to get you to think about units. We're trying to think, get you to think about inputs and outputs. And don't just always be in the habit of take a derivative or do, do uh, some algorithm you've been practicing. Stop and ask, why am I doing what am I doing? Stop and ask and, and say, does it make sense to do this? Okay, so that's all we're going to do there. Part B, the average cost. Okay, so now at that production level of 1600. So what does average, how do we calculate average? Like, so if I said I had a bowling score of 50, 75, and 95, uh, we would take all those numbers and add, up, add them up by the number of numbers. Right. Now, what if instead, though, I told you um, my cost, I, I made, I don't know, 10 units and my cost, I'm just totally making this up, was $17. Then how much would it cost me on average? Well, if you stop and think about what the what that's saying, it's saying, well, it, it's per unit, per, per each item. So if it cost me $17 total, then the average cost would just be 17 divided by 10, right? So therefore, how do you do part B? Well, just with this exact idea, you're going to say, I need to know, I need to, if, if I need to know average cost, it's um, just taking the actual cost and dividing by the number of units. Okay, so then marginal cost. Okay, now this is a calculus word, right? When we learned about marginals earlier in, in the notes, we said marginal is just hidden word for derivative. So how do I find the marginal cost? Well, I take the derivative of the regular cost. So we just need to see, find C prime, find your cost. So the marginal cost at a production level of 1600. So first you find your marginal cost, then if they want to know what it is at 1600, we're going to go ahead and substitute in 1600. So you got to find your derivative, then substitute in. All right. Now, <coughs> excuse me, the next ones are even more fun. Now, and, and they try and kind of trick you a little bit here. Um, the production level that will minimize average costs. So watch out, we've got two things being mixed in there. First thing, minimization. All right, so you say to yourself, using derivatives, using calculus, how do we find mini minimization? How do we do that? And you think back to your algorithms and you say, oh, yeah, 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 that's just my derivative set equal to zero, right? Find your, find your derivative and then set equal to zero. That's how I find minimums. But there's the trap. They didn't ask for the minimum of uh, the minimum cost. They asked for the minimum average cost. So therefore, before we ever take our derivative, because we don't want the derivative of the cost function, we want the derivative of the average cost function, right? So, and maybe what I'll do, make it a little cleaner, I'll put like um, cost of average, okay. So the average cost, how do you find that? Well, we talked about that earlier. How did you find average cost for part B? You take the number, the cost, and you divide it by the number of units. So in this function, what is the cost? No, so, and since we don't have a number to plug in, a number to substitute in, we can't put in a number. Um, so what we're just going to say is, what's my cost in general? Well, that's just this equation, isn't it? It's just whatever was given to you, you know, depending on your randomization and whatnot. 
So then that's the cost, so then I need to divide it by the number of units. And I'm going to leave that part up to you to try to figure out is what is the number of units? If I don't know what it is, what's the number of units? And my little hint I will give you um, is when in, in mathematics, when we don't know what something is or when it can change, what do we put in its place? Hint, hint, hint. Okay, there you go. So you're going to fill in something down there. Um, and then last but not least, for the minimal average cost. All right, so how do you find the minimal average cost? Well, the, in the previous step, we found the production level. So, and, and when they say production level, think about what variable they're asking for. Production level is X, the number of units you're going to make. So this problem, part D, is saying how many units make the minimum average cost. Part E is asking essentially the same question, same mathematics is, is done. It said it's just asking for the minimal average cost. So after you do part D and you find your, your actual average, the, the number of units, you can then substitute that into this, the, the derivative of this. You sub in that number and you'll find out the actual average cost. Okay, I hope those hints helped.